Good morning mm -hmm. and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Rashmata and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. The session will run over the next three hours, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. But before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Swami, our speaker for today's session. He is an aspirant software architect and currently works at Applied Information Sciences. He loves to learn about new technologies, but for now, I will hand over to Swami to begin the session. Over to you, Swami. Thanks, Rashkita. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the rules of the game. <laughs> no problem. All yours now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was speaking and I thought that I have started. Then I realized, oh, the rules of the game is not that. Apologies for that. Uh, so folks, uh, thanks for joining. Um, what we are going to do, as I was mentioning, there are 11 labs. The first uh, lab, three hours lab, was the foundational block for uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and Azure uh, functions. So what is the difference? How do you deploy? It was a pretty uh, lengthy thing, three hours of uh, foundational block. I will quickly spend one minute time on that so that you guys know that what did we cover in that session. But we will do those labs. Those labs were not completed because we spent a lot of time uh, setting up the IAS, setting up the virtual machine IAS and installing the browser. And why do you need to enable those uh, ports inside the IAS and what ports you need to enable, what other software you need to install on that virtual machine for it to host some applications. And then uh, we did the URL rewrite, and then we have enabled the DNS, and then we used Visual Studio 2022, and we showed why it will not work if you don't enable, and then we'll come back and enable this port, and then it will authenticate itself. If you don't enable this port here in all these places, uh, you will see this kind of error. It's unable to reach the web deploy. So you need to enable that. We spoke in length on that one. And uh, then the VM connectivity will be good because that's the port has to be enabled. Uh, even in the advanced firewall, if it is uh, firewall is blocking that you can uh, see over here in the Windows firewall, where we go and enable that as part of this uh, Windows firewall. And then there was an in, uh, in depth discussion on platform as a service and do a diff between infrastructure as a service and a platform as a service and processing logic. Even you don't need to worry about uh, infrastructure or anything, uh, just deploy your code, not even worry about this. So that's the third layer. So we spoke about all these things uh, in length. It's for three hour session. Please go through that. That will be very uh, helpful and that was just like a foundation for all these 11 labs. Now, this is the first session where we are covering two labs because I thought of to cover four, five, and six today. Um, when I uh, myself tried it, it uh, needs more time. So let's do that, okay? So whatever the time it is taking, let it take. But uh, as I was mentioning, our intention is to learn. So we'll learn. Uh, we'll spend time. Uh, time is not at all a problem. We'll learn it and close the rest of the windows so that I'll get some extra space. I'll just keep this one. So what's happening in this demo is this is like a uh, polyglot data solution. So here we will have, uh, we will create a Azure Cosmos DB account and a storage account. The storage account is used to upload the images and this will have a doc store, uh, all the JSON objects. And uh, from our local machine, we will upload the images to the storage account. That's as of now it's happening manually. 
in future session we will use the uh, we'll use the application to do a file upload well we'll, we'll revisit because we have uh, we are coming back to this one so currently this is manual process and this is a automated process and there's a local web application that goes and speaks to this uh, cosmos db and the cosmos db have the reference of this uh, image names and the image endpoint itself is uh, one of the configuration item inside the web application so when it gets get all records it gets all the records and the record itself will have the name of the image but it doesn't have where is the storage so that is a configuration item inside this local web app okay so let's start with uh, going ahead and starting our first lab uh, fourth lab that's where we are starting let us start with a clean slate we don't have anything we are creating the resource group now let's go and this is the resource group i will click on review and create create so this will give us more uh, confidence that we are doing everything from scratch right so i will go ahead first as of now i could say that continue with our code what is that Peters, I'll open file explorer. Speaker series, Microsoft Reactor. That's the lab two, it was four and five. I'll keep this source code. Okay, let it be. Now let's start. You already started. So the first thing is, they're asking us to log into the portal, which I have already logged into the Azure portal. I'm already in the Azure portal. So this is the one, our resource group. And this resource group is pretty much empty. It doesn't have anything. We're starting with a clean slate. Okay, so we'll start with this. There's nothing in here. Uh, will come first thing we will need a storage account okay so that uh, storage account is this azure cosmos db and that is we're taking a basic type but it is of uh, the no sql to the sql core you can see that that's the api type is sql core Okay, you can write the SQL queries kind of thing. First, let's create this. We'll go here. And I'll keep this handy because which I already tried every lab myself. So this is the name I have given. So I'll change a little bit. Um, Cosmos DB, you can search. You got this Azure Cosmos DB, and we'll create this one. You can do this, or you can click on this and click on create. You can do either way. And here we see that it is asking to go ahead for Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, and that's a Core SQL API type. So it's asking what is the API type, and this is the resource group. And the account name, what I'm calling it as, because that is already taken. So we'll use this format because uh, that's what we are using, number 12 dev. So let's keep it that way. And the best US. And the second thing, what they are specifying is create the polygon, the name we have given, and the Azure region also we have selected. And the capacity is, we can go with the request units, and or we can go with the serverless. We are going with the serverless. So we can um, 
request units the difference be, uh, between these two i'm just giving you some uh, some thought why we should select a over b so i'm taking an example of azure function uh, when you're creating azure function you can create it as a serverless that means you're not allocating any fixed hardware or computing uh, computing uh, resources to this in that case it is purely serverless and you can take back that up with a app service in that case you will pay x amount of uh, price for the hardware which you are blocking let's assume you are saying that you need 2 gb ram and one vcpu and some x number of hard disk so that means you're saying that i need this much capacity of hardware computing power so no matter you get a load or not you will definitely pay in that month when you know the predictable load okay this is what it is coming if you are blocking a computing that means you need to utilize that compute imagine a scenario every second you are getting thousand calls you know the predictability then it makes sense to block the hardware for that number of calls you definitely know that throughout the day you might get thousand calls or one lakh calls or two lakh calls whatever the number of calls it makes sense to use an app service if you block that app service and you're getting one or two calls a day it's like an overkill you're paying even though you're not using that computing power so in that case you need to take the serverless model because you're getting one or two calls a day so you'll be charged only for the time where you're executing your logic or or the code is being executed so you'll get a minimum bill when you go for uh, that but when you know predictability then you can use uh, the app service so similarly the provision throughput is you will pay so and so amount okay every serverless means you you don't know the amount of calls sometimes you might get 10 lakh calls in a day next one week you will not get a single call that gets balanced but you need to keep a watch before uh, choosing a or b okay we'll see this what else this guy is asking us to take we took all these things and it is geo redundant backup storage and that's what it is you can see this diagram and we'll see that whether it is matching or not and once we create that uh, we can see the subscription name and the resource group name whatever we have selected and the location is west us and this uh, account name and the api is core sql that's a old image now they are calling it as azure cosmos db for no sql and the capacity is serverless availability zone has been disabled we didn't uh, select that it's the backup is periodic and geo redundant i mean we can we could have taken the local redundant we don't need geo redundant because that's a demo but geo redundant is must when you're using the production because uh, it guarantees the sub millisecond you want your data to replicate every possible place so that you know you get uh, the response in sub milliseconds it takes little bit time so we will not waste our time we'll come back over here we will jump the line again we'll come back don't worry okay it is creating the cosmos db and another thing what we know need here is we'll come back to these things let's go ahead and create the storage account so what is the storage account the storage account is this one so we'll follow the same model we'll click on the create this and just type storage account you can search it from here also recently used you'll get it but it's i'm just showing uh, how do you search it okay our resource group is this yeah 
and I'm dropping this here because it's already taken. We'll follow the same mode. Uh, the standard, it's not premium. For me, the local redundant should be fair enough. And uh, let's go to advance. Let's keep all these options. We'll not touch anything. Um, we will go ahead and create. But one, one thing I would like to highlight is this. The encryption keys are managed by Microsoft. If there is a requirement or mandate from a customer or, or your own company, if it is a product based, you want to maintain your own uh, keys, you have the HSM module or uh, some uh, safe or uh, secure way to handle the keys. You can have your own keys, but uh, Microsoft, they have the HSM modules and other things. I am pretty sure using that is uh, more than enough. Uh, until unless there is some mandate in the policies that you need to use your own uh, encryption keys. So we have created two things. What what are the things which we have created? So we created in this block diagram. Let's see that we created the Cosmos DB. We have created the uh, uh, Polyglot store. OK, first we'll create this web application locally. We'll work on this and then we'll deploy. And we'll see a little bit of uh, the configuration on the other side. OK, let's go step by step. And the source code also, everything you will have it here in this part. OK, how do you search? You can go AZ204 Microsoft Labs. Just search this. So you will see these labs over here. OK, so these are the labs. I'll give you the link. I'll drop the link over here. Keep that handy. OK, that's an official labs. And what I did is I took their code and I modified a little bit uh, because the just to match with the latest MP. I didn't do much of the changes, but very, very minimal. We'll see that what what is that minimal change I did it. Uh, it's, it was not needed. I could have directly taken their labs and run it, but I just did some uh, small changes. OK, we have got the, uh, poly, uh, the polyglot databases. One, we have storage account. One is the Cosmos DB. So let's spend two, two minutes time to understand. So the Cosmos DB, you will have a database and you will have a container. OK, so no SQL API. That's the SQL core, the other name for that. And we can create the container. And we can create the database. And inside the database, we'll create container and drop all these things. OK, so you can if you need some assistance, you can take it from here in the get, getting started. They do a very good job. Uh, just do a click, click, click and everything they create and give it to us as if we just need to go and play with it. Right, so for our demo, we need these keys. We need the URI. We need URI. We need primary or secondary. You can take whatever you want. So the primary, uh, primary key and primary connection string. For some reason, if this is compromised, you can come and you can regenerate. Even though the guy who stole primary or second secondary key, because primary key we copied it, I didn't do experiment on that. Assume that uh, Ram has got access to the secondary key. 
and the secondary connection string. Now I can come back and then regenerate. So now the secondary key, including the secondary connection string, you can see that the same I22PE, I22PE. So this, this key itself will become invalid and it regenerates a new key. And this connection string will also change. So we will use one out of this. Now see this 122I, it's gone and now it's a new connect, new key, and even the connection string is new. So that's the tip. You can regenerate if the keys are compromised. Okay. Anyways, this will be for the temporary thing. Uh, we can go ahead with this one. Let's come back to this lab. Uh, we created these two. Now the first thing what we will be doing is we will be uploading one JSON and we will up that through programmatically and we'll upload all the images manually. Let's see that we created this and we copied URI primary key and primary connection string because if you're copying with URI and primary key, you can communicate. Okay, but while programmatically through web application, when you're connecting, you can use this uh, connection string. You can use the primary connection string or secondary connection string. Anything you can use. Because that itself will have all the connection information to connect. And we created a storage account also. Okay. And now we are good to go. What did we do in this first exercise? We created two types of data stores. One is the Cosmos TV account and one is the storage account. Now we need to review and upload the data. Now there are a lot of images we do have. We need to upload. So we can go. Let me take these. The last. So that it'd be easy for us to will we know where to go. So we'll come here. So that's a Cosmos. And this is the storage account. We go to this containers. OK, you go to the containers and then click a create container and the container name will be. Images. Container name is images. And the next important thing is blob anonymous read access only. That means you can't write from outside until you have the keys access keys to that or SAS. But anyone can access these images. So we'll just create a container. Okay, that's the first step. We'll create the container. And that has got public access just to read the blobs inside that. Okay. Now we'll go to this container. Go to this properties. And here the URL. How do you reach to that particular container? That is the one which we need when we are dealing with the web application. So we'll keep that handy. So we have created the container and we copied the URL. How how to reach to that particular container? Okay. Now we need to go back to the overview. And from overview, we have upload. We just click. Click on this upload and now where do we have these files? So go to this one and in the starter, we have this images folder. I will reveal in Explorer, copy this path. Now come and click on this. Select the file. I already selected it because I tried all these labs. Uh, I'm selecting all these files and click override if exists and click on upload. You're seeing that all the files are getting uploaded. 
it will be done in uh, a minute or two. Okay, looks like all the files has been uploaded. Let's see any one of this. If I take this blob URL and try to reach, I'm able to access. So I just drop this URL here. And you guys try and either just type a message if you are able to access. If you are unable to access, just do let me know. Just try that. Are you able to see that? Okay, just do a thumbs up or just uh, type message. Yes, you're able to access that. Okay, so we are able to upload. That's the Here. We'll come back to the preview and we'll see this one. We uploaded all the images. 42 images has been uploaded. Okay. Now, the next thing they're asking us to review the uh, JSON content. Okay. Let me uh, come here to my Visual Studio here on my machine. Let's use this, which I created. It's not uh, much of a changes, but uh, the concepts are pretty, uh, pretty much is very important. So we'll look into those concepts as and when we'll hit that specific point. Noting this. Let's give it a minute. Here is the file, the model JSON. You'll get every, everything here, as I was mentioning. As I was mentioning, whatever I'm showing, it's from Microsoft's official labs. Only thing is, I did few tweaks to this one. Nothing else. Everything as is. It's directly from Microsoft. Only the templates were a little different. So like one of the differences, this is in .NET 6. My solution is also in .NET 6. The only difference is I took a template which doesn't have this startup and program. It will have only one file. That's the latest template. That's the only thing and few minor tweaks here and there, but uh, rest everything is the same official Microsoft Labs. That's what we are doing it. So you will see this one. So it has got a lot of uh, documents, the collection. So let's see it here in Visual Studio. You can see, we can start minimizing like this. And you can see those number of rows. It goes all the way till 4,000. So a decent amount of 100 plus collections are there. So in each category, you have different products. In each category. You can see this different categories and tons and tons of products are there. So that's the step two. They're asking us to review how the things are in this JSON file. So we saw that uh, we have different categories and each category has got different products. How do you know that? If you come in here and open this, take any one of the category, this is a products collection. You can see that within that category, you have three products. Which in the within the next category, is it the same mountain? Oh, that's uh, whip shots. And within this, again, they kept three. And they have the image also. Okay, like this, you know, if you see this in this category, there is only one product. So they did a mix each category having uh, one or more products. It could be empty also. If, it, if, the, if, if a category 
is being introduced and they don't have the product ready, it could be uh, zero, null, or an empty array. So we did a at least a high level uh, walkthrough of what this model CSM contains. So I'll have a glass of water one second. Okay. And next, we'll create a Cosmos database and collection and upload this JSON doc. So I'll explain and we'll go back to the coding. So the first thing what they were asking is to, let's go here. Let's go to labs, the fourth lab, and in the solution, I have a bunch of works. This is the solution. I'll open this, and then we'll see. This is C-sharp program, which is having the endpoint authorization key. The database name is the retail. Container name is online. You have the partition key and JSON file path because the source for all those uh, documents or records are there in this JSON file. So we need to upload. And also we have two data transfer objects. One is model, one is product. So each model has got one or more products. We have seen that some of the categories has got three products, some category has got single product. It's the uh, data transfer object, technically. Okay, so that's the one. I did a small tweak, nothing, nothing else. It's not a big thing, but it's just whatever is the official, uh, uh, official Microsoft. The same thing is here. There's no difference. What I'll do is. I will go and write more. One more thing I would like to highlight here is in this app settings, you will not find any of these connection strings. You should keep this connection strings and mention what it should contain so that your colleagues or your team member or anyone who's in the DevOps they will know that what configuration it is needed so that it can be used or deployed to Azure environment or whatever is your broad environment. But we are using the user secrets. Okay, so what I do is I just right mouse click and click on manage user secrets. That will give me a secrets.json. And I need to go copy this, put it here inside the secret JSON. And what it needs account endpoint and account key, which we have already copied. So see that the account endpoint should have the trailing slash. Jesus. And the next thing is, it should have these keys, account key. Right, it should have this account key. Now what are we doing here in this program? We created Two models. We moved it to a separate folder, nothing else. We moved it to the separate folder and inside the program.cs, just a small tweak. Instead of having this hard coded, we moved that to the configuration secrets.json. It's not there in app settings, it's there in secrets.json. And uh, we are using this endpoint and account key. 
and then we are carrying forward with that. So you see that we are loading app settings as well as we are loading the secrets JSON. For that, you need to add these two namespaces. You need configuration app settings. You need this. You need secret JSON. You need to add that. So I've already added those two. So you will load it and you will read it from the secret JSON because we spoke that we should not use app settings because uh, if you want to test some something higher than your dev and those credentials, if you save it, it will be in the source code repository. It's risk, so we'll use this one. We have the database name and container, and we see that at this point of time in the data explorer, we don't have any of those things. We don't have anything here. No database, nothing. We'll create it in a minute. So we're using the Cosmos client and it creates. Let's go step by step. OK, I'll put a debugger. And we'll start this. The images were manually uploaded, but uh, by the time we'll come to the next lab, I will have that also. Uh, created through programmatically, okay? We'll upload all the images through programmatically. Okay, we are here. And you see that it goes and it creates the database if the database doesn't exist. We can come back over here and do a refresh. You see that? The database is there. Retail. Now, we go and we'll create a container. Now we'll come back. And we'll verify the container exists. And does this container has got any of the items? No, there are no items in this one. So it will be done in pretty quick. So what we are doing is technically we are reading the JSON file. And then we are looping through the items and we are adding it. And see that it's been done in two seconds. 119 items has been added in two seconds. So what if we run? Because each record should have a unique ID that already exists, isn't it? Now it will not add any more rows, but it says that those are already existing. See, it says that we are creating all we are 409 conflict because it already exists. The ID already exists, so it's no harm. So we wrote it that way. Simple. I mean, whatever the Microsoft code it is there, just reorganize the code a little bit and took the latest template. So step one, we crossed the step one. Now we can come and see this. There should be 119 rows here. For different categories and each, each category has got one or more records. OK, so I will close this, come back to this one. So we did the, I already added and create the, created this and kept it. So it's already, there. Now we did .NET build run and we tried. We executed also. We did a rerun of. Okay, there's nothing wrong in there. Now we can use the SQL kind of query. Technically, that's what it is doing here, right? So we can uh, do that way, or we can use new SQL query, and you can use this execute this query. Select star from C. Else you can specifically go and execute the model which we have executed. So you see that model it is giving. And you can already ex also execute the count. I mean, similar to the SQL query. That's the reason the API we have selected no SQL, SQL type. So 119. The same we have seen in the console saying that 119 records has been updated. So we crossed the step two also. 
Now the step three. The step three consists of two libraries and one web application. So first let's speak about this two libraries. Let me come in over here. I'll close this. The first library is models. Okay. And each of those models represents the the structure which is there inside the Cosmos DB. Okay, the string picture and the product. That's a product. You can see this is the product. And this is a model and it has got list of products. Right? Now, come to this context and check the interface. So this interface has got um, get model sync. It's like get all products. Find model async by GUID. Find product async by GUID. Because you see in the models, the model class or the product class, the ID is GUID. So here in this interface, we are using the same. This is get all. This is the find model. So model will have set of products. If it is product, any one of the product. So those are the two libraries which are used in this. Now I will select the web application. And inside this web application, you can see this is the template as I was mentioning. That's the only difference which I found it. So the template which I took doesn't have these two. Instead, it has got very minor tweaks here and there, but it's all the Microsoft's official uh, lab code itself. So here in this program .cs, first let's see what is needed from the connection string perspective. So let's take this two. And again, right mouse click on that. Manage user secrets. Someone is knocking the door. Just give me a minute. I'll be back. Come back, folks. Thanks. So, apart from that, we need these two pieces of information. Okay. Now, the Cosmos DB context. That means this entire connection string. That should be here. Ooh. Because I need to transfer from here to my virtual machine via this. That's painful, I know. I will paste it here. And that's the entire connection string. That's the connection string, and this is the path for the container. Right? So that is pretty much. I will close this. And what else do we have? We have, how do you know whether you're using a secrets JSON or not? You should see this tag. This element should exist. And and there's one image which is there, and it has got this package, and we are using these two libraries. And what is happening here? There is a settings file. 
and this settings file has got container URL. And if you go to this program.cs, here you can see that builder.configuration get section. And that's the another difference if you see here in this startup class. This is the previous template, which is from .NET file. Even though the project is of .NET 6, but the template is of this one. Now, if you see this latest template, it doesn't have these uh, startup configure service and uh, configure service or uh, configure. Instead, you have everything in the top level statements where you can see this one. This section itself is configure service. This section is configure. OK, that's the these kind of minor tweaks here and there. And this is very, very important, folks. Now, I the settings. The settings has got this class has got one parameter that is blob container URL. And if you get into this app settings section, you see this settings blob container URL. This is called strongly typed configuration. Very, very important, folks. This one. Because we can go ahead and get these information from the I configuration object also. From the configuration object also, you can bring in. But some people, they don't want to carry this I configuration all the places. See this, this, it needs two things, subject and recipient. So these guys can create a strongly typed configuration and pass this strongly typed configuration. Why? I'll show you in a minute. Let's put a deep breakpoint over here and execute this. When you execute, come to this builder object and do a quick watch and check into this configuration. And you see that this I configuration object is getting the source from seven different places. You can have more also, but these are the minimum it is getting it from. So you can see that the secrets.json is also loaded and it has got four things. And one of the thing is this secrets.json or the settings. Okay. Maybe the storage settings or blob settings or Cosmos DB settings. If I want to connect to the Cosmos DB, all I need is this one connection string. To connect the blob storage, I need this particular object, one class object with one property. Why should I use this entire configuration object, pass it across the globe to get this one piece of information? Instead, what they do is they use this strongly typed configuration, they create the class file, which exactly matches with the structure. You can see this settings and blob container URL. Inside the app settings, you have settings blob container URL. So your JSON structure should exactly match with your class structure. And you do a get section, load it, and there onwards, wherever you need the that particular configuration, pass that. You might have 10 things. You're using Cosmos DB, you're using SQL DB, you're using MySQL, you're using MongoDB. So you, if you pass I configuration object, the I configuration object is bringing friends and family. Like you give a marriage invitation, cordially invited family and friends. Like, like this, it's coming with seven different stores or anything more. Even inside the secrets.json itself, we have three configuration objects where I just need to connect to a blob storage, why do I need to get it the Cosmos DB information? I mean, that's my thought process. Uh, I prefer this using it. It's very lean also. So here it's just a simple. We create the context and you do a get all. It gets the product and uh, in the markup, HTML markup, we are doing 
looping through and we are doing a combine because as I was mentioning, the photo will have only the name, but the container path here, if you see that, where was the image? Yeah, this image. See, that will have only this one, the name. But rest of the pieces, if you see, that is coming from the secrets.json. Isn't it? We just copied it. To this one. It's, it's concatenating two things to create the image URL. That's it. It's very simple. Let's execute this one. Okay, we got that. And we are having the URL. Now the product or model, which is of uh, 7 to, we are clicking. That means now it goes to the details page. Now that gives this details page. It's a very simple web application. It has got two. Uh, two pages and we navigate. And how do you know that it is going to the details page? We can come back to the solution explorer, get into this details. And put a debugger over here. That's a model we are exposing. And this time we don't go. Cycle. Yeah, this is okay. What is this ID? It starts with 6B ECC. Click on that. See the ID? 6B ECC. So when you do that, it goes and gets the model. And inside this model, you see that that's has got model. This is what we have seen that the photo has got only the name. The next piece, it could be in storage A today. Tomorrow it can be in storage B. So splitting this is like a separation of concern. Application do not need to worry that from which, where the image is stored. It needs an image name and someone give the path for that. That's it. So that product is there. We are going and hitting it. There you go. So now we will extend the Microsoft Lab. One more thing which I found it, maybe I could not uh, find it. One difference I found it was here uh, the details. The link was not coming. I'll show you. Would be something I would have done wrong. But when I followed this one, ah, that's because you know uh, it was a little different because the file name itself was different. That was the reason. Because here it's like details, but when I created it was the file name itself was details model. But when it routes, it routes to the details because that's what it is. When you double click this CSS table, when you have the aggregate page means slash details means it will go here. And, and within this, you're asking ID and you're specifying the data type also. If, what is the parameter and what is the data type? That's it. So now we will extend the Microsoft lab, whatever the lab it was having. It was having those two things. On top of that, let's go and create a web application, right? So we'll go, what do we call? 
We'll call the same. We'll come in here. Ow. Web app. Okay. So if you see this lab, this lab, it speaks about those two connection strings. This is the uh, connection string for the cosmos. This is the uh, container path. And they give step-by-step -step instruction how to do it, where uh, we have to modify the connection string. And I did one small tweak, couple of tweaks here and there, but first everything is as it is. Okay, then they're doing the cleanup. So we are going one step ahead and deploying this to cloud. That's one step we are doing extra. So we'll come in here and this one and it's code and runtime stack is this. We'll do it in East US. And the plan will create a new one. Plan will create this and we'll change it to free. Because it, 60 minutes should be more than enough for us to give that a try. Or the previous one, anyone was able to access? Oh, okay. So, deployment. We're not using the deployment, not using anything of this, and monitoring, we don't need it. I want to keep it simple. And we'll deploy that. Okay, just give it a minute. So it gets deployed. Let's go here, wait for things to get deployed. That's in progress. Let's give it a minute. Let's see, did we do any change here? Make sure there are six changes. Ah, oh, that's the second. Let's see. Okay, it has been deployed. Let's go to this application. You should see the default application. The uh, hosting start.html, that's a file which it displays now. See that? That's cool. Okay. Now let's go and deploy our uh, Adventure Works web to that web application. So I'm doing right mouse click on this and publish. And we want to publish it to Azure and App Services, Windows App Service. And why it is asking me to re-enter the credentials? Is there any reason? 
give me a minute. There is a uh, two factor authentication. Okay. It's cool. So one net right another time. Uh, filter it off. Did I filter? Doesn't show. Did I do that once again? Studio core. I can bring in the Let me close this folder. Let me see. Am I signed into Azure? Signed into Azure. It's like it lost the connectivity. We see that that could be one reason. Then it's not showing my subscription. Just give me a minute. Signed in. That's thanks so much. Sometimes, you know, when we install some of the updates, it's losing that. See? Oh, it doesn't show that. Why? Showing. Sense. Show that. Never mind. We'll do it in a uh, different manner. Okay. We will download this publish setting files and open this. We'll Copy the published setting files. Publish settings. So I'll create a 
create this public setting file over here. I'll copy this. And let me use the same name. I mean, you can use any name, but I just wanted to keep it. Try store it in my root folder. Problem. Again, I need to go through the same process of copying this to this first. From here, there's another one. Okay, that's cool. And we saved it. We have the public setting file. We can do it this way also. Because actually it has to show my uh, account. I don't know why it didn't. So now I'm going and bringing in the public setting files. Now it will show that. So you can see show all settings. It shows that adventure work there and we can come back to this connection click on validate connection and it has to validate to the connectivity from this virtual machine to my web app and it shows that the connectivity is good so we can close that and click on uh, publish once we click on publish it goes and it publishes It takes time, but sometimes in the meanwhile, if we are we really lucky, we'll see that uh, site under construction deployment. So there will be another, this is an error page, but we were not that quick, but if we were, we would have seen that error message. Now we need to do a little bit of uh, configuration because it has deployed but it says error because we don't have the connection strings because we need those two of those connection strings. Which one when we go and manage user settings, we need this connection strings. So what we can do is we can come back over here and go to this configuration. We'll go to this configuration. And let's copy this over here. And we'll create those connection strings. So one of the things is the connection string that can directly be called as this. Because that is directly going under the connection string. So the new connection string that is this and what is the value for that connection string is this. Okay, we don't have for the it is for MySQL, SQL Server, SQL Azure, Postgres. We'll mark it as custom and we'll save that. Okay, so the next thing is little carefully observe that. So it is settings and blob container URL. So that has to be an application setting. You need to click on application setting and use underscore underscore because it's a hierarchical. Then you will need this. And then it needs this. Images. And you do and click on save and continue. Technically, when you update the web configuration of this configuration, it should restart. You see that 
settings underscore underscore blob connection string. Another one is the Cosmos DB that comes under connection string. You don't need to worry on that. Now, we clicked on it. It is taking time. There you go. You have it? And now, when we see, the application works in Azure also. So the key piece is whatever you store it in the connection string has to be created as part of the configuration. So anything in the connection string that can go directly. But anything within other section of the application settings and it has got a hierarchical, hierarchical structure, you need to use underscore underscore. So if you come and see this advanced settings, it will be like this. So please make a note of this one. So anywhere it is in hierarchy, you need to go ahead with underscore underscore. So let's do a quick check. Um, any queries on this? Aish, Rakesh, Ram, Rija, Kritika. Yeah, yeah, I use the Cosmos DB connection string. In some cases, someone has refreshed or, re, uh, or um, resetted. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I avoid those uh, those settings? Because uh, yes. only yes, yes Ram. So that is our uh, uh, that is our next uh, um, next episode. I will show okay. you where did we uh, where did we do that. If you come back to the location where I've given the series here, and if you have seen secure solutions and monitor and logging, so what will happen is you will not refer the connection string directly in your application. So you use a keyword. Okay. So in the application, in the web application configuration, here, what did we do? We referred the string literal, right? We mm -hmm. referred the string literal. Instead of referring the string literal, string literal, we will mention it like this. Get it from the keyboard. So you, that will be in the centralized location. Let mm -hmm. there be change. 100 times in one year or every 24 hours, let them change. You don't need to change anything in your application because you're referring the keyboard. Whoever changes the connection string, that will be his duty to update the keyboard also. So they both go hand in hand. Got it. Anyone else? Kritika, Srija, Rakesh, Ayush. Let's go to the next demo. Yes, no cancel. There are three buttons in this dialog. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Only Ram is speaking. Cool. Never mind. Hey, you guys are on or uh, they switched on and they left their desk and watching. Let's see here, there are two pieces. We'll do this one. So one thing is, how do you create a virtual machine through Azure CLI? That's pretty simple. The other concept is this uh, containerizing an application using Azure Container Registry and deploy it to Azure uh, uh, Container Instance. Both are pretty interesting topics let's do one by one okay so let's see this i have created that also so let me close this
and open the solution and this time this is the solution so and again all these demos whatever i'm showing it is directly from official microsoft's demos i did small modifications just to fit in with the latest template nothing else because this is just as top level i'll show you the difference uh, what we will do is when you execute this what is happening is it shows what is the current ip of my virtual machine that's a that's a very simple one okay so we'll do it in a reverse order first we will do the azure container registry one then we will do it another one so the next thing is if you want to see let's go and see the documentation and we'll come back this resource group the virtual machine will create it little later but this is very interesting let's do this one we'll come back and we'll redo every step but i'll directly take it to here if you see that that's the old template or the template which has got in the previous manner where they are not using the top level statements we are using the top level statements that's the only difference between the lab and the code which i took it from there and modified it here nothing else I, i just made it a top level statements same code nothing difference so when we execute it it shows the uh, just uh, it shows the uh, ip address okay so just give me a minute guys thanks so it's the same code now we saw this one the next thing what they are asking is to use a docker file and use this so what we will do is we'll right mouse click on this add docker support so by doing this we have taken linux as this and see it has created a docker file this is little bit different from um, what is there in the documentation but net net we both are doing the same thing now you can see that it has pulled this so this is a multi step process thus they are taking run time calling it as a base and then they are taking the sdk calling it as a build and they are building this cs proj and the working directory is source retrieve ip address and they are building it in the release mode and pushing output to the app build and then dot net publish and they are publishing it to app publish and then as final they are getting it as an app and from this publish folder they are publishing it publishing publishing it everything in the app folder so you see this app publish from there they are publishing it to working directory is app within the container there will be app folder where they are publishing all these things okay so if i execute this docker container see the difference we'll execute it as the docker container as well as we'll execute it as a independent thing also now if you come to the logs you need to Let's see. 
is the output. Container, we have this. See that? It is showing the container. How do you see? The other way is you can go to this uh, Docker desktop. And what was the container name? This one. Click on it. You see that. OK, now let's click on terminal. And do LS. You see the entire thing here. You see the Docker file, you see everything. And if I do CD dot dot, and I do PWD, print working directory, now do LS, then you see that the folder app. Now if I do CD app, I do LS. So now it matches with the instructions which we are seeing here. It says that app, drop everything inside the app. But once you build this image, then you will see all these things. You build the image and create the container with that. At the time, you will see all these things. So that's the only difference which we are doing between the Microsoft Lab and ours because we are using the Visual Studio 2022. We have the advantage. So we took the advantage of that and we created it. OK, now we'll come and create this one. Let's go. And we'll create a registry. So the resource group name is this one, isn't it? So let me go and copy this over here and first execute it in the cloud shell. This is the cloud shell. This is the cloud shell. And what's the resource group name? The resource group name is this one. So let me copy and create a couple of variables. One for the resource group, one for the Azure Container Registry. Okay. The first is RG name. So do a PWD. It's in my home directory. I right mouse click and paste it. Now that's, I can find echo dollar RG. So that's the resource group name. And the next one is container registry name. Echo. Register name. So we have this variable set. Next thing is to find out whether this registry is available or someone already took that. So it says that name available equal to true. That means we can go ahead and create it. We are going and creating this registry. Not 
I'll check it afterwards. But let's go ahead and uh, carry on with this demo. Let's not derail it. Okay, the registry has been created. Now we'll see that. ACR list. So it has got. Now let's check it. In the PSV format, that's the one which we created. And that will store it in a variable name. Echo. ACR name, the same thing, which is matching. Now we need to do a build. Okay. For that, what we will do is we will come back and we'll recreate it. What we created, we went to the cloud drive and that one we would like to rename it as retrieve IP address instead of that one change we do. MKDAR. We do get into that and we use the same name instead of the IP check. We call that, paste that, and it creates a new console app. And we do DR, you see that your program.cs and this one. And we'll also create a Docker file. And we do code of dot. That means it opens up the code. Where is this coming from? And palette. Why it should come? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It shouldn't show anything. Okay. Now let's come, come back to this program.cs. Let's copy this and come and paste it here. Okay. And dot net run. Let's execute this. So it should display the IP address. Like we tried three different methods. We tried one from the Visual Studio 2022 on my virtual machine. And we tried one inside the Docker and one here in the cloud shell. It works. So now what would what we do is we'll come back to this Docker file. We're using the Docker file which was generated from the Visual Studio 2022. That's one difference. We are not using the one which has been uh, given in the documentation, but we are using this. So if you see that retrieve IP address, let's see uh, this. And that's the thing which we copied. Okay, now let's come back to the this instructions. We did this, we did this, we did this, all the way we came till here. Now we need to execute this command. Okay, and that command will be this one. Okay, now we'll come back to that and let's go and see that we do have the Azure Container Registry. 
we do have that. Okay. So now I will execute this. So boom. editor let's see <clears throat> why you have that lock of five is there that repository to repository and time is different oh okay lower case Um, I when I was copy pasting, I didn't change the casing of this, so it's using the same. So now, if you come back to this Azure Container instance, sorry, Azure Container Registry, if you go to this one, you'll see that it's not there. The repositories are not there. So now we are pushing our first repository. Now you see this, the queue build ID is CA1. So that's each of the build which we create, it will have a ID. So we can track it back and see that how many times this image has been updated. So waiting for the agent, shouldn't take this time because it's just 10 lines of code. And it shouldn't take that long. Okay, in the meanwhile, let me come back over here and do one more update. Anyway, we need to do an admin user that is the future instruction, but instead of wasting time watching the screen, we have uh, updated that one also. And now let's come back to the registry and check. Is there any activity? No, there's no activity. Don't wait for that long. Sure on that. Should be pretty quick. Ah, that's what I'm saying. Shouldn't wait for agent that long. It was stuck somewhere. I don't know why. Now you see that whatever the instructions which it was executing inside the Visual Studio 2022, you see the same set of instructions. Now you see it's pulling in the SDK and then Jesus, what? Why? Copy fail. Why not from build context excluded? File does not exist. Okay, no problem. Because we created this instruction, there should be another file. Dot Docker ignore. Let's manually create it. Copy. 
editor. Now it should be fast because uh, the previous time, see that something, it will pull it, which is not there. Something which is already existing, it uses the existing layers. Why? Mm. Just come after ignore why, isn't it? Where did it go? Where did it touch him? Showing. Yeah, see it. Okay. See. Ah, see it. Docker ignore file is there. Try that again. If not, we'll fall back on um, it was hiding because I already created the check IP. With the uh, previous exercise, we can go go back because I am facing some problem here. It's not recognizing my subscription. I'll see why. But uh, for the time being, instead of wasting time, what we will do is we will uh, fall back. Let's do one final try. Hold this. Retrieve IP address. Copy created that. Source. That's fine. Okay, the context will be different. Here the context will be different. Let's see that. Let's go. It's just because the context. Oh, the thing. Ah, okay. So there are two things. There's one retrieve IP address. Inside that, there is another retrieve IP address. Then there is this project, which is not the case for us. Because the solution is outside. It says that inside this folder, there is this, which is not the case for us. Case for us is this. Because there's no. Parent folder. That's because that's what it was meant. It was calling it out explicitly, saying that you see that every time this ID is being increased, it was throwing an exception that it's missing the context. The context is this one. Because when you use the Visual Studio, that has got a solution folder, then the project folder. Okay. And now it says container failed. 
to retrieve it says the dark net running this build error project file does not exist copy Please, we should not have this. Should work. This is the last try. Not I'll fall back on that. You see that it is failing. Bring that to source. It's downloading. App comes to the build. Then copied. It ran the .NET build. Now it is publishing. It's copying from publish. And it is pushing. It's because of the context, because the way Visual Studio 2022 um, uh, have a different structure. That was a thing. So now you see that it was able to successfully push this. So if you come here and Refresh that. You see retrieve IP address. And inside this retrieve IP address, you can see this. And you see CA7. So that shows for that particular log what it has happened. So everything is here. Now, what we can do is let's quickly come back over here. In this, let's see what resources do we have. So we have our uh, Cosmos DB, we have our uh, storage account, and we have our web application, which is the products, and we have container registry. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll open this container registry in a separate tab, and uh, let's create a Azure container instance. There are multiple ways to do. One of the ways is this one. So we'll go. We'll create. Click on this. And here in, under the latest, click on this ellipse and run an instance. OK, so Azure. Container instance, I'm calling it as demo one. Okay. And let that be here. And uh, public IP address, I'm saying no. That means it's a console application, isn't it? Let it execute and it dismantle. So we are clicking on this. And it will go and deploy this latest image inside that container instance. Okay, in the next lab when we see, we'll, we'll create a web API and we'll containerize, and we'll use the Docker Hub to store the image and deploy it from Docker Hub, as well as uh, store the image in Azure Container Registry and deploy. We'll see all those things in the next episode, but for this episode, we'll keep it simple. And in the next session, we'll do a uh, little complex than this. Let's see. It is here. OK. 
Okay, that's done. You can come into this Azure container instance because it doesn't have public IP. We can't reach it from externally, but we need to come and see this. It shows the timestamp. When did it start? So it started uh, 12, 3, 12 seconds, 12, 3, 18, 12, 3, 46 seconds, and 12, 3, 47 seconds. Container has started. Now you see the properties, whatever the things which we have created, and also we can create the environment variables. And even if you are storing the connection string, we can make it as a secrets. So it just stores, uh, it shows asterisks. It doesn't show the value of that. And the container is running. Previous state was terminated. We saw that. And if you go to the logs, you see the IP address. It's giving all these things. This is one way to do it. The other way to do it is you need to click the resource. And. Click on the container instance. Container instances. Click on create. Call it as ACI demo two. Let's use it in East US. Availability zone, we don't need it. And we'll select this Azure container registry. And it was 192, I remember. And it bought the retrieve IP address. Everything it is doing on its own. Linux image. Um, we don't need the public IP. We don't need it at all. Let's see, it might need a private, but I'm not sure. Let's see, if it is not working, then we'll create a one more. Validation has passed. It's creating it. Let's give it a minute. Come back. Should create demo two also. There you go. Let's go to the containers. You might need to wait a little. We come to the containers. Oh, it started and it's killing. Check the logs. Sometimes I definitely see this. Ah, it was not started. I mean, sometimes I face this problem. It, maybe we came a little faster to check what was happening, but we need to wait to see the logs. It's loading because just now we started it. Again, state it says waiting. We need to wait for a couple of minutes, one or two. And uh, it does go and uh, pull the image again. You can see that in the events section. Okay, now it is started. Just wanted to ensure.
Okay, the time is different, but for us, what is important is it's displaying the IP address, which should be different from the previous one. It is uh, 16. 160, 0, 16. Let's see this. Oh. It is 168, Literally, I think I have I pressed that refresh button. I shouldn't have done that, but let's see. Let's give it a minute. Running. See this 168.0.16. This is 168.0.197. That means each of that is being displayed inside a separate container. Okay. So what did we do today? We created a Cosmos DB account and a storage account. And we uploaded images to the storage account manually. And we created a console application .NET 6 and used a JSON file to upload documents inside the storage account. And then we created a web application to get the docs and used the image containers path and concatenated that with the image name to retrieve the images because it has got allow public access. And then we started our journey with uh, creating a simple container in this session. Next session, we'll use the bigger containers, uh, the API containers, but this time it was a very pretty simple one. We executed it using Visual Studio 2022, then with, uh, then with this uh, Docker desktop, and then we created everything inside the console and we uploaded to Azure Container Instance. Sorry, Azure Container Registry. And from Azure Container Registry, we selected the image and clicked on the ellipse and deployed it to Azure Container Instance. And uh, the other thing was to create a Azure container instance and select the image. We did both the modes, okay? So in the next month, December, we have two events. Uh, we'll create two labs. One lab is uh, the part two of this and the other lab is to make it, um, okay? And also as I was uh, mentioning, we are starting a QL sessions of uh, how to create an entire solution using microservices. That means .NET 6 to microservices, and uh, one is products microservice and one is identity, both are separate. And there will be an Angular 14 application, uh, client application, and we will have Terraform to create infrastructure in Azure. We will have Azure Kubernetes service, and we'll have GitHub Actions, build pipeline, release pipeline. Everything will be happening through automation. So the plan is three sessions a month. That means four trees are 12, four months. That means you will build an entire e-commerce solution, even though it is small with three microservices, but we are going to build that. So if you guys are interested, please, Watch out for the meeting invite there in Reactor channel. 
and please uh, subscribe and join. So any feedback, positive or negative, please uh, feel free to uh, call it out explicitly. I'll be more than happy, even if you guys have any negative feedback, do not hesitate because the feedback will help me uh, grow. And if at all something is missing, if you guys give that input, it will help me uh, to take care of that in the future sessions. So any queries or anything to discuss, please unmute yourself and we can speak. Aish. Rakesh. Hi, I'm Kartika. So it was a good session for me and I'm new to this uh, .NET and uh, it was a uh, uh, little bit uh, difficult to understand the .NET script code, but I can understand the Azure functionality since currently I'm working in the Azure. Oh, okay. This, it was good. Good. You call your name as Kritika? Kartika. Kartika. Okay. Hey, Kartika, you, you go and watch the 22 previous episodes. Were you there when I pasted that image? Um, I will see. Here. Okay, I will check this. I thought your name was Kritika. Thanks, Rija. Do you have any... Uh, Feedback positive or negative, please feel free. And Rashmita will speak now. Rashmita? Hey, I sure I'll get something uh, on uh, Spring Boot next time. Sure, I will do that. Yeah, sure, that will be helpful. I'll do that. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Anything from you, Srija? Feedback, positive or negative? Takesh and Kar Kartika. Uh, Rashmita? Hello, Rashmita? So from the concepts perspective, Azure concepts, you guys were uh, able to understand? Yeah, most of the things uh, able to get, but I think so once we'll have some hands on, then you can get it more understanding. Okay. Yeah, because I, I mostly do the hands-on sessions, Aish. I don't come up with slides. You saw that I had a zero. Yeah, slide. yeah. And I'm saying when, when I am personally going to do, because that whatever you were explaining, I was able to get, but when I will going to do, then it will be more confidence or I will be having I more know. understanding. That's true. That's true. You have this video handy, isn't it? So you can correlate yeah. with the options which we are selecting. Yes. Hello? Yeah, sure. Cool. Prashmita? Uh, I think we are done. So thank you so much, Swami, and thank you everyone for joining the call. Uh, yeah, so please look out for more uh, sessions on our meetup page. And feel free to reach out to Swami in case if you have any questions or doubt later. Yeah, thank you once again. I told about our uh, uh, 12 sessions.